At LSC, we're opening an exhibit based on your de-extinction effort to resurrect, kind of, the woolly mammoth by combining DNA recovered from ancient frozen mammoths with genetic material of modern Asian elephants. How are you doing this? We are highly motivated by 1,400 gigatons of carbon, which is present in the Arctic, uh, that is, uh, it has a much thicker uh, topsoil than, than most other parts of the world, including forests. And it, um, uh, it is largely in the form of methane, and it could easily, and 1,400 gigatons, to put that in perspective, is uh, 10 gigatons is the total use, uh, all human uh, use put together per year. Uh, this is 1,400, and it's in the form of methane, which is about 30 times worse than the carbon dioxide that humans generally produce. Um, anyway, that, that is at risk because of the missing, miss, a key missing herbivore that, that probably our ancestors contributed to uh, extinction, which is an uh, uh, elephant relative, the mammoth. And they would uh, have maintained the grasslands rather than letting the, the trees encroach. And the trees things would be much improved if we went back to the grasslands and, that were maintained by uh, the mammoths. So, that, so we're, we're trying to make cold-resistant elephants that, that fill that ecological niche. They don't have to be perfect copies of the mammoths, just good enough to, uh, uh, to do their job that they used to do over... Uh, 10 to 20 million square kilometers of Arctic. The elephants uh, love to knock down trees, and the trees in the Arctic are pretty easy, and they'll knock them over even if they're not planning on eating them. So uh, that, would, that would result in the carbon in the trees um, getting buried in the permafrost and freezing, and then being replaced by uh, more photosynthetic grass, which is easier to, to pound down the snow in the wintertime and allow the cold air, the, the minus 40 air, to get down and cool down the plus 20 ground. It's a provocative and extraordinary approach to confronting global warming. Walk me through how you'll bring back mammoths or mammophants or elemoths or whatever these cold-loving creatures should be called. Well, so um, in a way, we've done a bit of a dry run on this by engineering pigs uh, for um, use in, in transplantation, making organs for humans. And the steps are first to, to uh, make a list of what you want to do. So you t in this case, sequencing lots of um, mammoth genomes, but it could be other, you could use other sources of information about cold tolerant animals, you know, polar bears, penguins, so forth. But you'd make a list of genes that, that uh, uh, have more fur, uh, longer, thicker, uh, smaller ears, uh, more fat deposits, uh, uh, better uh, thermal uh, regulatory uh, nerve components and blood components. Anyway, this list um, is fairly mature. Uh, uh, and then you, then you go in and you start changing those. And very often, it's a very small number of changes per gene and a very small number of genes. So for example, in the pigs, we made um, 42 changes. And those have all been made all at once in one pig strain. And now you can make hundreds of, of those pigs by normal breeding. It no longer is a expensive scientific laboratory experiment. It's just pigs doing what they do. Uh, in the case of elephants, you might want to scale it up faster. Um, because their gestation and, and maturation rate is slower than the pigs. Uh, and so we're exploring ways that we can um, uh, have accelerated um, uh, uh, gestation a, a outside of the body. So uh, making about 40 edits, as we did with pigs, in, in uh, any kind of elephant cell, and then you take the nucleus from that elephant cell and put it into uh, an egg. Um, um, and then let that egg develop uh, either in a surrogate um, mother or um, outside uh, the, the, the body. Um, those are some of the next few milestones that we need to do. Uh, and ch each step checking that the um, 
effect of the mutation physiologically is what we thought it would be. So that's already been shown for, for two genes uh, that have been, de have been subject to de-extinction or, or revival. Uh, one of them is in the hemoglobin gene involved in the temperature of the blood oxygen exchange, and the other is a TRPV3 gene that's involved in um, a thermal responsive uh, neuronal uh, physiology. Two genes uh, out of maybe 40 or so uh, have been fully re resurrected and tested. Now, they were particularly easy ones because they don't need to have uh, even an embryo to test them. But some of them will require a fetus, some will require, um, you know, a full, you know, an adult uh, to test them. How long until we'll see your first mammoth? Well, it depends on how well we've guessed. If we've guessed correctly, then, then it's absolute minimum of two years of gestation and then a few years uh, to get to an old enough animal that we can test all the, all the aspects. Uh, you know, including behavioral and, um, you know, whether they're comfortable in the cold and whether they knock down trees still and so forth. Um, if, if, we made a, if we didn't get it right, then it'll take an entire iteration cycle of that, which is uh, another, would be another decade. We've de-risked de it a little bit with the pig experiments, but the elephant, there's a great deal less experience with the reproductive technologies that we take for granted in pigs uh, and, and the gestation period, instead of being uh, almost four months for pigs, it's about 22 months for elephants. So both of those make it uh, a little harder. But yeah, very optimistically, uh, half a decade, more realistically two. And then scaling up is a whole nother matter. So we do a lot of safety engineering. And one of the things that one worries about, about just recreating an entire ancient genome is that it could have uh, ancient viruses hidden in there that you don't recognize. So we're not doing that. We're not resurrect. We're reading the ancient genome, but we're not re resuscitating. We're just doing individual, just really one base pair at a time out of six billion, one at a, a, you know maybe forty genes with one, two, or three changes each. So it's a very small number of changes. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, in fact, we're we're as a Further safety feature: We're trying to make them resistant to viruses uh, that that we know exist today. So that one of the reasons that that the Asian elephant is an endangered species is that there are virus uh, the uh, EEHV, which is a herpes virus, uh, will kill off uh, baby elephants w at weaning when they're losing the antibodies from the mother's milk uh, at around five years old. We've also shown in pigs that we can eliminate. Uh, viruses that are built into their genome, uh, so-called endogenous retroviruses. I worry that the mammoth might be lonely. Oh, the, well, we intend to make uh, tens of thousands, uh, maybe hundreds of thousands. Uh, and you can even do quite a few uh, at the beginning, uh, as soon as you're confident it's moving in the right direction. They are a social species. They will need um, some form of uh, companionship and, and training. They're very closely related genetically to the Asian elephant, and so probably they will be compatible um, at the beginning. So Liberty Science Center is in a gigantic park, Liberty State Park, that's larger than Central Park. It goes all the way to the edge of the Hudson. So we're going to get out the snow machines and start making snow and ice. We want the mammoths to come visit. That would be great. <laughs> I would love to. I, I, I've been uh, to LSC. It's very, it's a beautiful place. And, it would be so much more beautiful with some um, elephants. As always, thank you, Dr. Church. Yeah, take care. Instead of Jurassic Park, we'll have Pleistocene Park. Dr. Church's mammoth effort may sound like science fiction, but it's not. We'll see whether or not he succeeds. Church is the OG of genomics, and those who bet against him usually lose.